Hi boys and girls, it's been a while, but um, I thought I'd bring you down uh, a little rural sort of spot we got here called uh, Gypsy Lane. And I'm just going to collect some wild edibles. Uh, the ones I'm collecting will be nettle and ramsons, which is a wild garlic. And there's only a couple of places that can find wild garlic in my local, and this is one of them. Nettles, of course, are in profusion everywhere. So uh, I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. So among the uh, wild plants here is this comfrey, which is still quite young and tender at this time of year. And it's growing here among uh, stinging nettles and... Uh, some cleavers and comfrey was traditionally used um, to draw bad stuff out of wounds and to reset bones so um, it has a long history as a medicinal plant here in Europe I think the locals uh, dogs are objecting to my presence but uh, there's some brambles here which we'll see more of in the summer and uh, plenty of hawthorn which is just about everywhere and um, elder on old elder you can sometimes find uh, wood ear mushrooms which is rather nice Another very common plant in the UK is dock, which uh, was also used to um, rub on your skin to, to stop irritation, particularly from uh, nettle stings. Another very common plant in the UK is dandelion, and all parts of it are edible, and some of them are very, very good. Uh, you can put an inverted pla uh, plant pot over a, a young dandelion and it will grow up towards the pinhole light in the base of the plant pot and it will blanch but uh, the, the leaves are quite bitter the roots make excellent coffee you just dry, dry them out and grind them to make excellent coffee substitute without the caffeine I'll have you know but the, by far the most nutritious part of the dandelion is the flower and as you see the buds are coming up on these so uh, I include dandelion flowers in my daily weekly diet one point to note on nettles is when you harvest them just take the tips the tender young tips make sure you wear stout gloves or you get a sting there is techniques you can use to uh, pick them without stinging, but they've never really worked for me. <laughs> it's that time of spring and the uh, bluebells are starting to come up, which is very, very pleasant to see. One of the first wildflowers I learned about as a boy, there was a place nearby Hucknall where I lived, or Kimberley where I lived in Nottinghamshire called Bluebell Woods and uh, that was a rather pleasant place to visit as a child oh here's the woofs hello woof We've got woofs saying hello hello woof hiya, hiya. Come here, baby. I've just come through the pedestrian gate into Bruton Park on the outer edge of Bruton Park looking in and it's all rather sparse and denuded at this time of year and the spring growth is only just starting to happen let's go find those ramsons little grey squirrel there I'm afraid grey squirrels are something of a pest in this country they've displaced our native uh, brown squirrels 
They're still very cute little creatures. Looks like the folks at forestry management might have lost a bird box fallen out of a, a tree unless, it, unless it's been crammed there purposefully. I would rather think that's too low to be of any real use. No doubt they'll put that back when they can. Of course, another spring favourite in the national flower of Wales is the daffodil, which you see springing up here in little tufts around this corner. So the first inkling that you've uh, found uh, ramsons or wild garlic is that is the pungent smell of, of garlic. It, it pervades the area in which you find them. Um, I'll get this done quick because it's just starting to rain here. So what you're looking for is this at this time of year is, is this broad flat leaf and let's just pick one and you'll see it's got those almost vertical striations in the leaf and you can smell garlic it just it just smells of garlic uh, unfortunately, there are not many patches of wild garlic in this area, so if you do harvest from the wild, make sure you only take a little bit and be aware that other, other people may be trying to harvest it as well. So you don't want to over-harvest it and you don't want to kill it off. So this is all I've managed to find in the whole of Bruton Park so far. So uh, there you go. So this is part one of a stinging nettle and wild garlic or ramson pesto. Part two will be carried out at home in the kitchen. So keep your eyes peeled and uh, happy foraging. Yum.